A number of you have asked me to tell you about the Raspberry Pi alarm system that I've got. Now, I haven't presented this before because it's a bit of a mess, but I'll take you through it now because it's a working system even though it's not complete. So, here's the area where the original alarm was in the house and it had, you know, one of these circuit boards here and the battery which is still not finished but I might put it in this one and a remote control to arm it and disarm it. The remote control for the previous alarm system that was here uh, goes to this box here. Okay, that's the receiver, little antennas up there and went into that previous system. Now I'm not going to use this, that's coming out. So the, the receiver that I've now got is here for the moment but what I'm going to do is put that towards the front of the house so that uh, it's closer to where I'm going to be likely to press the button in the first place. I'll just go through what's here at the moment even though I'm going to rip all this out, neaten it up and start again for the final product. So I've got the network and power coming in from the PoE switch here. Okay, that goes to a PoE splitter. Now, from that, the network output just goes straight to the Raspberry Pi for its network connection. I'm also grabbing 12 volts out, and the 12 volts goes to this uh, DC to DC converter. So I've got 12 volts in, 5 volts out to power the Raspberry Pi. I also take the 12 volts out that I get from the output of the PoE splitter, I take the 12 volts out and bring it over here to the, the chalky blocks here to run the, the um, devices that need 12 volts. So you can see, or maybe you can see, I've got a whole bunch of uh, red and blacks here for the, the motion sensors around the house. And I've got on the output side, I've got uh, 12 volts for the buzzer, the screamer, the strobe, and all that sort of thing. Now, the inputs, these are from the motion sensors. I've got five inputs here, and they go into the Raspberry Pi. Now, there's eight inputs in the Raspberry Pi, so the other three I've just got mapped to the three buttons, sorry, the three buttons on the remote control here that go to the relay here, which in turn tells the Raspberry Pi input that a button was pressed. Uh, that is pretty much it. Obviously, I've, on the outputs of the Raspberry Pi, I've connected it to eight relays, and some of them I've got switching 12 volts for things that I want to turn on when I activate the output, like the buzzers and the screamers. And another one is just the relay connector to the garage door. Now the garage door just has a wall switch that connects to it so I can control the garage door as well from the Raspberry Pi. So that's the system as it stands at the moment and I'll pull it apart and make it neater. Right now here I am in the garage. The garage door, like pretty much every one of them, has two connectors inside where you can just uh, connect a wall push button switch to up operate it. Now obviously it comes with the uh, wireless remote that you keep in your car. So you press that, obviously it goes up and, and goes down. But since I've got the two wires going into it, I've got that as one of the outputs from that Raspberry Pi. And the new controller that I'm using for the arm and disarm of the alarm, I've also set up one of the buttons to do the door. So I can do the door from the remote. So I just have to carry one remote now which does the alarm and the garage door rather than having two. And the way I've set it up is I can't open the garage door if it's armed. And the reason I did that is so when I come home I have to disarm it and then I can open the garage door rather than open the garage door and set off the alarm. So that's just a convenience. This is how the remote works in the real world. So if I just back out of the driveway Okay, now press the button, the garage door shuts. Now once that's shut, uh, I can just press the arm button and I'll hear the beep. Okay, so I've heard it beep, now I know the system's armed. Now I can't press, well I can press, but I can't open the garage door while it's armed. But if I disarm it, now I can open the garage door. Like so. After I just shot that footage, I thought, well that's a bit stupid having to wait for the garage door to go all the way down before I can arm it, because I might be in a hurry. So I'll just change that in the code and make it say something like, 
if I arm it, it won't actually arm for another 20 seconds or something, which gives me time to put the garage door down. Something like that. But the beauty is, it's in my own system in a Raspberry Pi, so I can just change the Python script and, and make it do exactly what I want. Near the front door, there was this um, control panel right about there. But obviously that's redundant now, so I've just put a blanking panel on here, and it's, it's just got that little beeper that you heard before, just so I can hear when it's armed and disarmed and I have to do a little bit of paint work, but that's about it. Here's one of the motion sensors, which if I move, sets it off, and you can see it's got a blue light instead of a red one. And it'll stay on for four seconds, no matter how long there's movement for. As well as the push button remote control, I'm also making an Android app for the phone so that I can control it from this, but also monitor it from wherever I am. So, you know I don't like these cloud systems where people have a middleman. I'll just have my phone running my program, connecting directly to the house, and seeing the situation. And then if something happens here, I'll just get it to notify me on the phone directly. This is my rough concept idea for the uh, phone app. Basically, I'm gonna have the option to set whichever zone you want for the alarm to be, and then just arm it to arm it. Now for disarm it, you can change those zones. And I'll also have just a buzzer, which is that beeper at the front, in case I don't want the whole alarm, just a notification for me. Primarily for if I've got the garage door open, I might just want a little alert for myself if there's movement in the garage rather than setting off the alarm. Now also garage door just like the button on the remote, um, status window, the event time and down here I might have a display of the uh, image from the front webcam as well which is also from a Raspberry Pi but that shouldn't be too hard. And as you can see I'm just toying with the idea of putting the Powerwall charge display on there too just, just for the hell of it. The Raspberry Pi is shut down and I've taken the PoE connector out, so I can just rip all this out now and get ready to start again. I've taken the uh, motion sensors out, the buzzer and the screamer. Uh, the last one here is uh, the strobe outside. I didn't have the siren connected up because it wasn't working, but um, the cable's there for it, so I'll fix that up when I do this. I forgot the garage door remote. Which I'm going to take out. All right. Now this has also got to come off because it's redundant now. I don't want to see it here. Right, here's the receiver unit. So I'm going to use Cat5 because there's four pairs in there. So I'll just use one for each relay. And I'll just use speaker cable for the power for the unit. And that'll be it. Right here, I've just connected the four relays, even though I'll only be using three, but of course I'll wire it up ready for the future. And the power cable, which is just some speaker wire to provide the 12 volts to the unit. A bit rough, but let's face it, it's gonna be sitting in the roof, so it will be fine. So there's my receiver. Okay, I've got all the cables ready. Um, I've just put the remote receiver at the front of the house and Here's the cable for the relays and the 12 volt supply for it. This is the little buzzer at the front of the house, just to alert me locally without making a big fuss. Uh, this is the garage door button, which is just a push button, so if they join together, it'll open the garage door. Uh, this one is the screamer inside the house. It makes a loud noise inside the house. And this is the siren and the strobe outside the house to make a loud noise outside. And these are the five motion sensors from around the place. And this is the network connection with PoE. This is the alarm hardware before I connect everything back in. Okay, what I've got is the Raspberry Pi and the Pi face, a relay board for the outputs, and for the inputs, I've got these uh, connector blocks here, and also the outputs from the relay, just to make it easier rather than messing around with the little tiny connectors here. So the PoE comes from the switch, so you get the network and power into this PoE splitter here. Now the network just goes out to the Raspberry Pi, but the output, the DC output is 12 volts here, which goes to this 12 to 5 volt converter here. The 5 volts obviously feeding the Raspberry Pi, but I'm also grabbing some from the 12 volt side to bring it around to this side of the board here for 12 volts for things like the motion sensors and the um, sirens and that. 
Right, I've got all the cables back in and neaten it up a bit. Yeah, it's pretty good for what it is. And I've got the program running. So if I press uh, the disarm button, just for a, a test, you can see what I've got is for the buzzer at the front that you probably heard, uh, one of the outputs powers it via the relay and you can see it flash when I do it. So if I arm it, I do two beeps and once to disarm. So that's pretty much it. The rest is software definable really. Right, I'm here just below one of the motion sensors and if I walk around, you'll see it lights up but the system's disarmed even though I've got the program running. So what I will do is I'll arm it and now if I walk past that and then disarm it because I don't want that going off. So it works. In the future I might put a um, charging circuit for the 12 volt battery which would sit in there to give it backup power. But for now, something is better than nothing. So what I'm going to do now is just put the cover on, take all these stickers off because it's now Raspberry Pi powered. I'll show you a bit of the software side of it, but I won't go too far into it because uh, it's up to you how you want to make it. But basically I've just got a Python script running which checks the inputs and acts accordingly depending on how I wanted it set up. So here's an example of, of the output from that program. So if I move in here, you'll see the music room has just been triggered and there is motion somewhere. So if I go for a walk around the house, you'll see different zones um, trip the alarm and then subsequently get reset, of course. In the alarm program, I've also set it to be a network server so I can connect to it with my phone. And it's all done in Python. And basically you've just got things like um, little definitions here for turning the screamer on, the screamer off, the siren on, siren off, that sort of thing. And, um, and look, that one there is just how to read the inputs on the Pi face. And the rest is up to you. So there it is, a Raspberry Pi based alarm system, which the phone can connect to, to set and reset and get notifications without a middleman. So there's no, no cloud-based thing. It's just my phone directly connecting to the home, monitoring my own house.